So for some reason, everybody is buying these designer fragrances. These are really hot right now. And don't just take it from me. I'm not making this up. I went directly to Macy's.com and sorted by their best sellers. Now, one thing you have to be careful with is when you start scrolling, you'll see sponsored you know, listings where they'll throw in something random to try to push that one. Those don't count. Those are essentially ad placements, okay? I'm going through the actual list sorting by best sellers here to get a good idea. You know, in our little world here, the fragrance community, we pretty much exclusively shop at discounters, but that's not how the majority of people do it. There are so many people out there buying this stuff at, stuff at retail prices like crazy. So to get a really good, accurate read on what everybody's buying right now, you're gonna wanna use the retailer websites. And another thing I wanna mention is that I excluded all of the very obvious ones. Your Dior Sauvages, Blue de Chanel's, Versace Pour Homes, Dylan Blues, and, and all of those. You know, Dolce and Gabbana, the one. None of those are in here because those have been bestsellers for years at this point. There are a couple that have been out for years that might be a little bit surprising even still. We'll go through those kind of as we work our way through here. So if you want to get a good idea of what is really working well right now, make sure you stay tuned. And just because these are, you know, being referenced off of retailers doesn't mean you should go buy these at full retail. I will link all of these down below to discounters so you can save some money. Starting off at number 10, this is, you know, going to be towards the bottom of the list, obviously. Uh, this is still on page two of the bestsellers, though. So that's kind of where I stopped, working our way all the way up to the, you know, top placement on the first page, less the overly obvious ones like I had mentioned. And this one is one that really did surprise me. It's been out for what feels like ever at this point, but it is still selling bottles and moving bottles like crazy at retail price, mind you. It's Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille. I don't know if maybe this one, you know, seasonally saw an increase because we're just working our way out of winter here. And so it kind of worked its way up the rank there for a little bit. Because when I've done these videos before, I don't remember seeing this one up that high, although I guess I could be wrong. I wouldn't be surprised if now as we work our way into summer, this one drops back down and some other stuff kind of takes its place. But yeah, this again is only on page two of the bestsellers, which is not that deep into it. Number 10 here on the list. That's pretty crazy considering the price point that this one comes in at. And again, the fact that this has been out for a long time now. It is without a doubt one of the best tobacco fragrances you can buy, but you have to be you know, willing to spend that type of money on it. I'll give you a little hint here. You can get something very similar for 20 bucks. It's called Paris Corner Cheruto Tobacco Vini. Check that one out and thank me later. It's a very, very similar product. But this one here is a bestseller for a great reason. Again, it's a beauty of a scent. It smells like Christmas time. And so makes sense that it was uh, definitely a, a bestseller throughout the winter months. At number nine, we have a relatively new release. It is Prada Luna Rosa Ocean, the Eau de Parfum. This stuff is great. I'm glad to see that it's being somewhat relevant. And you know, Prada is a big brand. The Luna Rosa line is a pretty popularized lineup that you know has a lot of eyeballs on it, whether people are really looking forward to the new ones now or not. I really don't know. I know I still am. But you know, these oceans can be a bit boring for some people, especially the original. I do think this one is a significant improvement over the original with that frankincense in here, just giving it a bit more richness, more character, more complexity, and more personality at the end of the day. There's nothing wrong with the original Eau de Toilette, but it is pretty cookie cutter and it doesn't offer anything new. This does do something different. There's a real cool kind of bubbly, fizzy texture that you get off the opening as well, which just changes things up a little bit. This is better than what you might think. And you know, even on paper, it still might not look all that interesting, but at least give this one a try. You might be surprised. And it seems like people are catching on here a little bit as it's uh, maintaining some sort of relevancy here on the bestsellers page. I think this one was on page number two towards the top, at least browsing on my phone. At number eight, we have Aqua de Joe Profondo. Um, no surprise at all. And again, besides the obvious ones, the original Aqua de Joe, it was up towards the top, you know, on the first page, things like that. We're not gonna be featuring those. But Profondo was one of the next ones. 
The Eau de Parfum was on there somewhere as well, um, but you know, Profondo, again, it makes sense. This one is done very well within the community, big hype beast, and I think it's getting a lot of recognition outside of the community as well, which is good to see. You know, you might have the mindset that, oh, you want to keep it to yourself, you want to keep it a secret, and that's something that I can understand. It's never going to happen, but I can understand it. There's niche and indie if you're really passionate about that approach, but it's good to see that these are getting recognition, so hopefully it acts as motivation to keep the line going. I'm not saying that they're just going to stop making Aqua de Joes. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, but more so in the sense of trying to push it to the next level instead of just giving us, you know, kind of mindless flanker releases. Maybe they can really start to create some newer, more exciting innovations, kind of like Profondo. I think compared to a lot of the others in the Aqua de Joe lineup, this one is pretty unique and it's a different take on a marine scent that I haven't really smelled anywhere else and hasn't been replicated all that often aside from like as our Chrome Extreme and a, you know a couple clones out there now, but this really was a pioneer for just a new style, and I love it for that reason. It's great for summertime, for the hottest of days. Definitely a bestseller. This one, believe it or not, is already at number seven. Again, not a sponsored listing. I kind of double checked here when I was putting this video together. It's already worked its way up, and it's not surprising. And people are going to buy this no matter the price point because there is a cult following behind this line as well. I'm sure you know what it is. It is YSLY Elixir. So brand new, hot off the presses, and it's already creeping its way up. It's going to be by far on the first page sometime this year, if not within a few months, guaranteed. Um, just it's It just makes sense. For what it's worth, this has been my signature scent for a while now, and you know people are going to say, well, that's because you bought it, and you have it, and so of course you're going to be wearing it, and that's true, and that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. The barrier to entry on this one has been set significantly higher than the other YSLYs and a lot of other designer fragrances in general. It is borderline niche price, and at this price per mil, it could be considered truly niche price. It's not 100 milliliters for 180, it's 60 ml. That is pretty insane. So I'm not gonna sit here and defend the price. It's outrageous, okay? But once it hits discounters, I can think it would be a little bit more reasonable and people who are really into the line and would like a nice improvement and to get away from that sweetness and to just get a little bit more power out of this DNA just in the form of an aromatic and uh, kind of woody approach, this would be a good offering at some point. At number six, we have Dior Ohm 2020. So obviously, 2020 release here, and it's had time to work its way up, so this is nothing new. But it's doing pretty pretty well. It's kind of stabilized now, and I think it's going to be towards the top of the list for years to come. This is one of the best signature scents for men out there who are not looking to build up a giant collection, and that's because this is simply a one-and-done type of scent. It could work for anything that you could possibly imagine, and so if you're just trying to have a handful of fragrances, right, this is something that is going to pique a lot of people's interest because it doesn't take an expert to be able to realize that you could wear this for anything. I mean, when you walk into a store and you smell this, you just kind of know that it's fresh, it's woody, it's clean, people like how it smells, and you're just going to wear it all the time, and that's really something good to have. It's easy to hate on this one. I've hated on this one. And I'll also be the first to admit, I still don't love it. I don't love how it smells. I've grown to respect it and I appreciate it for what it is. And I think in terms of a you know marketing standpoint and a sales standpoint, it's genius, but it's not something that I hardly ever wear. And that's you know evident by the level on this one. But I do try to throw it in videos whenever it makes sense because again, it is a good option for people who just don't want to go crazy and be like me with more fragrances that you possibly know what to do with. I mean, when you have as many as myself and other YouTubers out there, you're going to wear the things that you like the most. If you don't like something, you're just not going to wear it. That's how it is for me. But this does work well for a lot of people, and it makes complete sense that it is a bestseller. Breaking into the top five, this is yet another one that's pretty surprising to me, and uh, it's a little bit interesting. It's One Million Lucky. Again, 
not a sponsored listing on there. It was uh, truly ranked, and I believe we're probably, yeah, I think we're probably on the first page now, kind of towards the bottom with this one. And again, that might be different if you're on desktop versus mobile. I was on the mobile app or you know browser when doing this, so they might have less per page. I don't know, but it's still a bestseller. And the reason why it's bizarre is because it's not anywhere to be found on discounters, which is you know uncharacteristic because typically the one millions are found all over the place, even in Walmart and stuff. And uh, this one's been out of stock on them for a pretty good period of time which does kind of limit it in the community because a lot of people within the community exclusively shop on discounters and won't touch anything retail. But it's good to see that this one's still going strong, you know, outside of the community or just in the retail market. Because there's been a whole bunch of speculation about this being discontinued and not. There's been, you know, kind of conflicting answers from the brand themselves which is you know, par for the course. That's typically how it goes. You reach out to a brand and you ask them and they'll say it's discontinued and then it just shows back up later. Really, you just are better off guessing because typically they have, you know, either they don't know what they're talking about or there's miscommunication or both. So yeah, for right now, you could still get this one. You're gonna have to pay retail for it, but it is doable. And again, it's a bestseller and it makes sense. It's a plum, hazelnut, honey, aldehydic scent, so it's fresh, it's sweet, it's powdery, it's a bit syrupy. It is the perfect example of fresh meat sweet to achieve a really attractive result, which is just something that pulls compliments and smells great. At number four, we have Azaro the Most Wanted Parfum, or wait a minute, oops. Azaro the Most Wanted Eau de Parfum, not the Parfum. I love the Parfum, it's my favorite between these two but it's not on the bestsellers page. This one is, however, and it makes sense because it was out first, and it also makes sense because between the two, this one probably is a bit more mass-pleasing and designer-ish. And trust me, I'm not saying that the most wanted parfum is niche level and niche quality because it's not, but it does have a bit more of a unique feel with this kind of fizzy, bubbly, ginger opening, almost giving off like a Dunhill Icon grape soda smell, which is one of my favorite parts about the Most Wanted Parfum. Getting into a bourbon vanilla sweet dry down, great stuff. But this one is more traditionally sweet with like a toffee gourmand note, tonka bean and all of that stuff. It's also a little bit more affordable given that it's not a parfum flanker. So again, this one's doing pretty well. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I did not see Wanted by Night ranking, you know, in there. So I think this is above Wanted by Night right now in terms of the uh, best sellers there. I think Wanted by Night sometimes has been just unavailable on retailers, but it has been in stock on discounters. Kind of one of those weird deals where you just don't know what's going on, but this one, it's doing pretty well. Breaking into the top three, looking back on it, I probably should have excluded this one, but I wanted to mention it for one reason, because that's a simple fact that it's actually dropped down. So in the past, I've done videos like this before, and this was at number one or um, number two. It was still, it's at number three, which is good, but it's, it's moved down a little bit. And again, this is compared to removing all the obvious ones. So like this was number one in front of, you know, the, um, I think it was in front of the Blue de Chanel's for the while, uh, Dylan Blue, Poor Ohm, et cetera. And so it's dropped down below all of those. So something interesting. It's why Eau de Parfum. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still a massive scent, still moving bottles like crazy, but not as much as it was at its peak a year or two ago. Like it was legitimately at like the top of the list and it's worked its way down, which is, you know, not necessarily shocking that's going to happen. And with new flankers coming out, the Eau de Parfum Intense, the new Elixir, that's going to happen. I still think it's worth picking up if you want a beast mode, everyday wear, compliment getting blue scent. You really cannot go wrong with something like this. It does have that younger feel to it, which is, you know, fine. Just depends on what you're after but the performance alone is one of the main selling points for this, and it is no joke. At number two, this one is Versace Eros Eau de Parfum. So this one is uh, getting quite a bit of love, and it's not new, but it's not old either. 
And, you know, we have Flame, we have the Parfum, and of course the EDT. So, you know, there's some other options out there, but this was ahead of those. So it's, I think the EDT was probably ahead of this one ranking, which I left out. And then now up next in terms of the best sellers is the Eau de Parfum. And it's another one of those situations where you sit there and you look at that and you go, yeah, I can see that because a lot of people who have been wearing the EDT for years as their signature scent have likely just graduated over to the Eau de Parfum because it's still very similar. It just has better performance now and just tweaks the DNA enough to make it worth switching. And, you know, it's also different enough to where it does kind of feel like you're switching it up a little bit. I mean, think about wearing the same thing as your signature scent for years and years and years. Even a minor change to that DNA is going to make it seem brand new. So that's kind of the uh, appeal behind this one. My recommendation would be to skip this, actually, and go either straight for the Parfum or even Eros Flame. I think at this point, the Eau de Parfum in the middle there is not really worth the purchase anymore. Number one, this one is, I guess I shouldn't say it's surprising because I've said this a million times, but it makes sense when you've smelled this, you understand why. But at the same time, it is, uh, it's, you know, it's interesting. It is a YSL Myself, which is an Eau de Parfum. This is the first of the line. They started it off as an EDP, which I respect that, setting themselves up for Eau de Parfum Intense and Parfum and Elixir and Eau Fresh. I'm sure they're going to put out an Eau Fresh or EDT Intense or, or, or you know something like that uh, because they don't have an EDT. So... Be look out, be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for probably, I would imagine, another one of these this year because, you know, they are going to continue to ride that wave, but we haven't seen it yet. When you smell this one, you'll understand why it sells so well. It's just a fresh, easygoing, likable scent all the way around. It's just nothing exciting, and it's gotten a ton of hate. No surprise there. And I think, you know, to expect something unique out of something that looks like this with this note breakdown is a little bit ironic in and of itself. Of course, I bought this because I buy pretty much every new release, but going into it, I knew it wasn't gonna be all that exciting and, and new and fun because, well, I looked at the note breakdown for two seconds and, and realized, oh yeah, that's gonna be a easy to wear, relatively cookie cutter release, and it is. But again, for the average guy, there is 0% chance that you can mess this up. There's no way you can wear this to the wrong situation or anything like that. I'm going to wrap it up here. Some of the best selling designer fragrances right now in 2024. I'm going to do these periodically because with the new releases coming quickly here for this year, this is probably going to change up quite a bit. I'll link them down below to discounters. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.